Hi there, Sam Gossner here with Versilian Studios, and I'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough of the contact part of the standard edition of Versilian Studios Chamber Orchestra. So just to preface this, uh, unfortunately, the VSTi and Audio Units version, there's been a bit of a game-breaking bug, so to say, uh, and that won't be available for at least a couple days. But the contact portion uh, is definitely available now, and anyone who purchases the standard edition will receive the VSDI and audio units version later if desired. So, this is quite similar to the professional version in layout and general structure. It just has, for the most part, less content. So let's dive down into our instruments folder. So you'll see right at a first glance, uh, of course, when you open this up, you probably will no longer have your RAR files sitting there. Uh, but you'll see we have documentation, instruments, samples, and the NKC and NKR. So it's important that you don't change the uh, structure of any of these. What I mean by that is don't put one of these folders in a different spot. Uh, particularly the, the um, instruments, samples, and NKR and NKC, because that will result in uh, bad things. So when we go inside our instruments folder, we'll see we have a number of categories, brass, keys, mallets, percussion, strings, and woodwinds. So if we dive further, you'll see there's a small selection of instruments in each, Our general philosophy for the standard edition was what are the barebone instruments that you need to make a chamber orchestra, particularly. This isn't supposed to be a, a large symphony orchestra by any means. So let me just load up an instrument to show you kind of what the user interface looks like. So you can do this simply by clicking on an NKI file, not a folder, but an actual NKI file, and dragging it into the contact window. Now you can also load an instrument by double clicking, but it will result in a new instance of contact. So if you're using contact in a DAW, for example, make sure you open it up and drag and drop. You can also navigate to this using the file browser, but that can get a little complicated. So I typically tend to just have an explorer window open and drag and drop. So this is the basic user interface. If you're familiar with contact, you will be very familiar with this upper portion. This is used on all contact instruments. So for those of you who aren't familiar, just to go over that, this is the name of the patch that we're using. We have the audio output route for this. You won't need to worry about too much unless you're working with a template in which you output to multiple buses and process through different reverb, and so on. And over here is the MIDI channel input. This is the channel that it's receiving MIDI data from. So in your DAW, you can actually have Different MIDI tracks go to different MIDI channels, or same thing with different keyboards. And this way, you can trigger different instruments in different tracks, and thus use a single instance to create multiple polyphonic instruments. Over here, we have our voices. So this number to the left is simply a meter of voices. You'll see if I start playing notes, we'll uh, get that number moving. Over here is the maximum limit. So you'll see down here it says in the description, if you don't need as many voices, you can reduce the number and gain some efficiency. So that's something to keep in mind. If you notice that you're bumping into the number, notes are getting cut off, you can always increase it. Over here is just a simple memory meter telling us how much RAM is in use. 
Over here we have simple solo and mute options, an overall instrument tune, some traditional pan and volume. Now we get into the custom UI. So this can be opened and closed by clicking on the Versilion Studios logo up here. So over here we have our mic mixer. Now the difference, one of the differences at least, between the standard and the pro edition is that the standard edition only has one mic position available per instrument. So in this case, it's just a close mic. You can still adjust the volume and uh, if you want to save some memory or all of the memory, you can completely purge that mic position if you're not using it. Down here we have controls for stereo width and stereo pan. These actually use phasing by delaying channels to create a stereo pan effect rather than simply changing the volume of one channel over the other. Sort of like if you imagine tilting your head, you know there's a slightly further distance between your ear and the sound signal. So that's how that works. And by combining, say, the stereo pan with a little bit of the traditional stereo, you can create a much more realistic pan effect than by either one alone. Over here on the right, we have some basic effects. So up here is a low pass and a high pass. They're jointly enabled and disabled. So the low pass, if you think about it, let's frequencies below a certain threshold, that's that number there, pass, meaning it doesn't get rid of them, it doesn't cut them out, which means essentially it cuts out anything above that with a certain ramp off. And the high pass, on the other hand, does the opposite. It lets frequencies above a certain threshold pass. So for example, to remove rumble, you may increase the high pass up, uh, maybe up to 100, somewhere in there, depending on the instrument. Uh, or to decrease hiss and noise, you may decrease this uh, as far down as maybe even 6 or 10k, depending on the instrument, once again. Now this next section is a uh, basic convolution reverb. Here we have just the on and off toggle. It's typically on by default. So pre-delay is an element that helps you place your sound source in a room. When a signal originates from an instrument, it heads off in all directions to some extent, and also straight towards you, right? So the sound that comes towards you typically reaches you before it manages to bounce off the walls and then come to you. And this is what pre-delay attempts to try to simulate, is the difference between the time the original source hits you and the time the essentially reverbized source hits you. Uh, next up we have room, which is basically just a wet mix. So that's how much of the actual reverb signal is getting in here. So this is useful for just helping determine the size of the hall. Of course, down here is the actual size, which is, in, in essence, the length of the impulse. So for most instruments, about 100 is fine. We can reduce that down to maybe in the 70s or 60s for certain percussion instruments, or else they get too washy. And uh, for room, it's typically best to leave it between about a negative 15 and negative 5 anywhere above that, and you might get a little bit too much reverb depending on the instrument. Flutes are uh, particularly good with reverb, so you can actually push it up around there fairly well, and uh, anywhere below negative 15 and you won't be hearing much of it at all. This bottom section here has typically just some basic parameters for the instrument. So attack is your basic ADSR attack, you know, you can roll off some of that and get a bit softer of a start to your notes. Or you can also use that to remove any artifacts that may appear at the start of a note. Over here is the volume of the release sample. 
So that's handy if you want a bit more uh, accented of a release, or if you notice that the releases are too strong, that's something you can customize to taste. And of course, all of these elements are mappable to any sort of MIDI CC. So I can right click on one, press Learn MIDI CC Automation, wiggle something on my keyboard, and then I'll be able to control that in real time in on my keyboard, in my DAW, and so on. Now just to touch up on this bottom section here, this is the articulation control panel. So right here we can see a read-off of what articulation we have loaded. We can see a visual representation of that articulation. And if we also look down at the keyboard, we can see the particular key switch that is used for that articulation. And of course, if I can visually change here between the articulations, and you'll notice the key switch updates as well to show which one is selected, which key switch that is. And of course, I can always use my keyboard to do this as well. And over here on the far left, we have an articulation lock which means that you cannot switch articulations. So this is handy if you're one of those people who likes to have one articulation per patch. You don't really like the key switch stuff. This is great. Uh, and lastly, we can also move our whole key switch area around. So if it feels an octave too low, octave too high, we want to load another instrument in the same channel right down here, and we don't want the key switch to interfere, we can do that. And for each of these, we also have a little diamond underneath that allows us to load and purge the samples. So if you watch the memory up here, when I click this, you'll notice it decreases. This is handy if you're on a low RAM environment or just running out. So you can load, unload at will the articulations that you don't want. And it'll completely purge them for you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this quick little overview of the operation of the Standard Edition, and I hope you enjoy Versilian Studios Chamber Orchestra. Have a great day.